when it comes to having a, a grid connected uh, energy storage system like we've developed here that can really significantly reduce some of those high charges that commercial customers see on their electric bills. That's going to raise the voltage on the DC bus and achieving anywhere between 250 to maybe up to 850, close to 950 volts for the battery. So you can have, you can have multiple cabinets together connected to a common inverter. The smarter way to go solar. Hi everyone, Joe Ordia here for Solar Surge. Today we're coming back to you from RE Plus, the International Solar Conference here in Las Vegas. This morning I'm joined by Logan Bacher from Pites. We're looking at the Pites high voltage commercial and industrial storage solution. So Logan, great to see you again. Yeah, thank you, Joe. Thanks for taking time to of chat course, with us. Of course. So Logan, as you know, a lot of installers out there are looking at residential solar is probably going to be slowing down in the beginning of 2026. You know, we lost the 25B tax credit. And I know many of the installers out there are considering getting more exposure in the commercial and industrial space. So tell us, for those that are more familiar with residential storage solutions, what do we need to know about commercial scale solar solu uh, storage solutions uh, and about your solution in particular, the 48110 SE? Definitely. Yeah, I mean, with the disappearance of the residential tax credit, I think we're already seeing a big pivot uh, from, from residential installs and projects into the commercial CNI space. So. Uh, this is something that we've developed to really uh, enter that market or attack that market head on. Uh, and it's, it's actually the second generation high voltage or commercial battery we've developed, uh, which includes a lot of improvements, not just to the cabinet or the housing of the batteries, but actually to the battery modules themselves. So when it comes to you know, applications or what scenarios can you use this for, right? Uh, some businesses, the majority of their electric bill can be due to things like uh, time of use billing or peak demand charges, you know, um, especially if you think of an application like a like a grocery store or maybe even a church, right? That's a good example of, of a big giant commercial space that's maybe only occupied one or two days a week and the rest of the time their energy needs are very, 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 very low. So when it comes to having a, a grid connected uh, energy storage system like we've developed here that can really significantly reduce some of those high charges that commercial customers see on their electric bills. Makes sense, makes sense. Now when you talk about a, a high voltage solution or a high voltage battery, what does that typically mean in terms of operating range? Right, so um, you know, most of, most of what Pites has developed up, the, up to this point has been in the residential space, 51.2 volt nominal solutions. Uh, we're using very similar modules inside of this cabinet. Uh, all that's really changing is the method of connection, right? So instead of connecting the batteries in parallel, to maintain that low voltage on the DC bus. We're connecting these in series. That's gonna raise the voltage on the DC bus and achieving anywhere between 250 to maybe up to 850, close to 950 volts for the batteries. Interesting, okay, so much higher operating voltage. Now in terms of, of inverter pairing then, what, what type of inverter would you typically pair with a, with a high voltage commercial battery like this? So this is designed for high voltage battery input inverters uh, such as Solark 30K, 60K, and then as well the new Solus uh, CNI line, they'll have a 30K and a 60K for the US market as well. Makes sense, makes sense. Okay, so how, how does it work? I see a lot of things going on here. Fire, fire alarm, yeah. emergency shutoff, uh, and, and what appears to be a climate control unit. Yeah, yeah, so this is the outside of the cabinet. It's an IP55 rated enclosure. Uh, there's not a whole lot to see on the outside, emergency stop button, fire alarm. Maybe the big focus on the front here is the heat pump. So this will do both heating and cooling for the air inside the cabinet. So Logan, I, I take it this is fully outdoor rated. What, what are we looking at in terms of operating temperature range? Yeah, good question. So the cabinet itself is insulated and we have uh, climate control. We also have built-in ventilation fans and heating pads in the modules themselves that are inside the cabinet. So the combination of all of that gives us a really wide operating temperature range of about minus four Fahrenheit up to about 120 Fahrenheit, or in Celsius, it's about minus 20 C to I think about 50 C. Okay, great, great. Well, can we take a peek inside? Absolutely, yeah, let's open it up. All right, so a lot going on here. I guess let's start at, at the door here. First thing I noticed is the red, I, I take yeah. this, is this fire suppression? Uh, not the fire suppression, but this is the fire control system. So this is kind of like the brains of the, of the fire suppression and all of the sensors and detectors as well. Okay, and is this your control panel here? Yeah, so this is a touch screen. Uh, this will have our uh, own self-developed uh, EMS, energy management system built in. 
Uh, this is this is kind of like the brain, the central brain of the entire cabinet. So this is what's calling all the shots. This thing is communicating with uh, the inverter, with the modules, with the fire control system, with the heating and cooling. So this is the main, uh, as I said, kind of hub or, or brain of the cabinet. Okay. And these are all your breaker disconnects here? Yeah, yeah. So these are these are circuit breakers. There's some relays that are in here as well. Uh, kind of the, the main switching components as well for DC and AC. All right, so Logan, what other safety features are built, built into the enclosure here? Yeah, so we saw the fire control system. Like I said, that's kind of communicating with everything that's inside the cabinet. Um, you can see at the top here, a few different sensors. We have a hazardous gas detector, smoke sensors, aerosol fire suppression, and then an active ventilation system as well. Um, one other thing to point out, which I think is a really nice feature related to climate control temperature management, we already spoke about the heat pump, which will do heating and cooling for the space inside the cabinet. That conditioned air gets blown towards the back of the modules and goes down two vertical columns in each of the, in each of the battery uh, columns or stacks. And we've redesigned these battery modules from our previous commercial uh, product. And now the modules have uh, integrated fans. So the fans will pull that hot or cold air through themselves to even further uh, regulate the temperature of the battery module. Okay, okay. Well, let's take a closer look at the modules themselves. Yeah. So each each module, okay. Now, what are, what are we looking at in terms of capacity for each module? Right, so each module here is a five kilowatt hour capacity, 51.2 volts nominal, uh, 100 amp hour batteries, very, very similar to our server rack batteries like our V5, like our E-Box. But again, the difference here is the method of connection. So we're connecting the batteries in series to get up to somewhere between uh, usually 500 to 850 volts. Uh, because of how this is designed, the modules themselves are very, very basic, right? We really just have a couple of power connections, communications. As I said, that, that circulation fan is built in. These modules also have a built-in heating pad. So you have the, okay. the heat uh, air pump in combination with the battery heating pad and an insulated cabinet uh, to, to help them you know, stay above that, that minus four Fahrenheit set point, basically. But from a battery perspective, uh, the main, I guess the main thing to feature is our control unit, or our BCU. So that's this component here. So this is communicating with all of our battery modules. This is what you use to actually turn the battery system off and on, has your comms to the inverter, has your comms to the central control system. So because all of those more advanced features are built into our BCU, the modules themselves are, are, are quite simple. And I want to add one more thing too as well, uh, just from a protection standpoint, the modules, each, each battery module has its own uh, individual BMS. So if something happens to one module out of the cabinet uh, on, a, on a module level or a battery level, they can, can detect that themselves. We have a master contactor BMS built into our BCU or our control unit as well. So it looks like we've got 12 modules in this enclosure here. So this would be 60 kilowatt hours? Correct, yeah. Is, is this the maximum configuration for a single cabinet? Almost, almost. So yeah, as you see it here with 12 modules, it's about 60 kilowatt hours. You can do up to 15 modules total, which is just shy of 80 kilowatt hours for the cabinet. And now, depending on what inverter you're using, right, depending on the input voltage range uh, for the battery input on that inverter, you can, uh, you can utilize this cabinet in different configurations. You can have all 12 modules connected in series, or you could have two groups of six uh, that are not quite in parallel, but independent from one or the other. So again, really, really high degree of flexibility to match with different uh, commercial inverters that are on the market right now. And if I wanted to, let's say I wanted to, to go to 120 kilowatt hours of capacity on a single inverter, can I just parallel connect two cabinets? Or Absolutely. Can I connect two cabinets Absolutely. with storage into, into one, one inverter? Yeah, so you can, have, you can have multiple cabinets together connected to a common inverter. A lot of these CNI inverters as well, Joe, have two battery inputs. Okay. So imagine we have a, something like a, a Solark 60K, right? You take 12 modules connected in series in cabinet one, you duplicate that same 12 modules connected in series in the second cabinet, and now each cabinet feeding independently into both inputs on the inverter. So really, really simple design. Uh, that bill, bill of materials literally becomes just four things, right? Your inverter, your cabinet, the modules, and then the control unit. So we try to, we try to make it as easy as we can for our installers. Sounds good, sounds good. Well, Logan, is there anything else that the audience should know about the HV 40, 48100 uh, or the high voltage storage solution? 
Uh, well, I think I think we covered quite a bit. You know, just to just to recap, it's a new and improved version of a commercial product we've had on the market for uh, just about two years now. So, you know, one of the things that we try to focus on at Pites is is uh, evolution, right? Every every new product we come out with is a little bit better than the last, and and this one's no exception. Uh, we do have these available in the U.S. right now. Uh, we received our first order recently and uh, hoping to complete uh, UL9540 certification as a standalone DS DC ESS in the next few weeks. So we're really excited to, uh, to have that and, and uh, release it into the market. So Logan, what can you tell us about the warranty protection on the product? So this one right now has our standard 10 year, 10 -year warranty like most of our other uh, commercial and residential products. Great, and you're saying this, this is available for order now? or It is available for order now, yep. These are currently in stock in the US and we expect to have more coming soon. And like I said, that 9540 uh, important certification that we all know is, is uh, gonna be finalized within the next few weeks. Sounds good. Well folks, this has been a, a new look here at the Pites High Voltage Commercial Battery Storage Solution. It's known as the HV48100 SE. Uh, by the way, folks, that's why we come to the conferences like this, is that if you guys can't get out here to see all this stuff in person, you can still stay up to date with all the latest solar technology and product information. So if you want to see more videos like this, make sure you hit the thumbs up button. That'll tell YouTube to show you the other videos similar that are going to be coming out here. Well, I thank you all for spending some more time on the Solar Surge channel. As always, I'm Joe Ordia here, encouraging you to get prepared and be empowered. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you on the next video.